Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee Chat with Color ID. I'm your host, Mark Deegan. Coffee Chat is an informative video series where we ask questions to our very own Color ID experts. Today's guest, Director of Product Management at Color ID, David Solsmith. Let's jump in. Today we're going to discuss Desfire EV1, 2, and 3. Um, in the fall of 2018, you created a spotlight article for Color ID that broke down the differences between EV1 and EV2. The biggest takeaway was the increased read range for EV2. Um, but in regards to the new chip, EV3, if you had to pinpoint one thing for it, what's what's the biggest takeaway for EV3? Uh, good question, Mark. I uh... I've done some research. These chips have been rolled out very recently by the manufacturers, and, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about why. So at Color ID, we don't have any in hand yet. We're just starting to order some sample cards so we can send them out to our customers. But uh, checking on NXP's website and, and information from them, which I try to stay up with, Ch NXP is the uh, giant chip maker that makes all these different MyFair and MyFair Desfire chips and the uh, chips that go in the readers. Mm -hmm. And what they did with EV3 is they created a graph showing that EV3 is 1.6 times faster and has a 15% <laughs> better read range. However, mm -hmm. they compared it to EV1. Now, oh. it's kind of interesting, you know, as a sales mm -hmm. guy, we understand what they're doing there. Uh, we mm -hmm. knew that the EV2 is better than EV1 for read range and for speed, how quickly the, the card communicates with the reader. And, and some of that is just read range. You get closer. Uh, if it can read from a farther farther away, it begins reading sooner. And, and so mm -hmm. by the time you've moved your card to the reader, it's already done its transaction. So we knew EV2 is better than EV1. We don't know yet how much better EV3 is than EV2, but I have heard that along the lines of what uh, NXP was reporting, that we should expect a little bit better read range and a little quicker also. Interesting, okay. So, I mean, during this you know past couple of years, this pandemic, um, the marketplace has been like insanely volatile. It's hard to get any type of chip um, these days. So if we we're just looking at EV1, two and three, and if I had to place an order today, is there any type of like, pattern or you know, which of those chips are more available than others? Is, th is there anything that you know we could piece together that could help folks out? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, if you want EV1 or EV2 and you have been buying either one of those from HID or Allegiant, um, you need to consider EV3 because both of those manufacturers have told us that the lead times for EV1 from HID and EV2 from Allegiant are very long, months long, or wow. even longer. I mean, we're we're hearing manufacturers cook the, the so chips come from NXP, and they are built into an inlay, which is a very thin layer that includes the antenna connected to the chip, and that becomes mm -hmm. part of the card. The card manufacturers like Allegiant and HID and Identiv and other companies, they stack up all these layers of plastic, including the inlay, they don't make the chips. They have to get the chips and the inlays built. Mm -hmm. So so these companies are telling us that they do not have access to EV1 and EV2 chips. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and so they're like, and at best, it's going to be months in, into the future. And, and in some cases, they're saying we don't even know when we might be, might be able to get those. But we do have EV3. And so hmm. we're we're hearing, and this is very recent. This is just in the last month. HID created a part number, uh, said they're going to cost the same. Allegiant created a new part number. They told us they're going to cost the same as the as the previous card. So we are busy right now ordering samples for our customers uh, that okay. will be migrating from the earlier chip to EV3. They're they're supposed to be backwards compatible, and knowing how NXP works, I completely expect that on the readers and locks that mm -hmm. the manufacturer is providing these cards for. However, let's say, for example, you're, uh, you have OSA locks and HID readers on your walls and you're reading Desfire with HID data on there. Well, when you get your EV3 card, it's the same data, HID data, 
and it's on a backward compatible chip. But if you take it to a reader, um, like a USB reader at a copy machine or, to, or at a point of sale device uh, that's plugged into a host, you know, like a yep. point of sale terminal, mm -hmm. um, if that reader has been configured to only read the original card, like EV1, it will look at the card because that's information that the that the reader gets right away. It gets it, you know, it, what kind of card, what kind of chip am I talking to? What's some other information? That's all part of the original authentication. So the reader knows I'm talking mm -hmm. to a different, you know, I'm, hey, this is an EV3 card. And the reader goes, oh, I'm, I'm not configured to read EV3. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean it can't or it doesn't mean it cannot be configured, but we have to find out. And so, it, right. you know, reader to reader, you know, we, it, like I said, uh, HID cards on HID uh, wall mount readers and OSA locks, we expect no problem. Schlage cards on a Legion uh, and Schlage readers and locks, we expect no problem. But when you go off into third party readers, RF ideas, um, they'll probably be okay, we guess. OmniKey, mm -hmm. Elatech, we just don't know. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen there. So it's like, it sounds like you know, I mean, obviously these these cards are quite an investment for end users. So play it safe. The smart thing to do is get some test cards and go around, and start tapping, and see what works. And if something doesn't work, then huddle up with us and we can figure it out. So yes. Now, interestingly, we you know we have a lot of different manufacturers that we source cards from, and when mm -hmm. when uh, customers started running out of cards you know even almost a year ago now and would want to place an order and we'd say sorry it's going to be three to six months you know mm -hmm. and it's like, oh no um and so some customers went backwards to prox cards you know they've mm -hmm. been using i class or desfire or whatever and and you know but they have multi-tech readers and so we mm -hmm. you know well prox works okay well <laughs> we'll sell you some prox cards um right. And, and on the other hand, uh, uh, we have some Asian card providers. Mm -hmm. They've had, they have access to the EV2 cards. What's the lead time? Two weeks. So wow. I don't know if some providers just had vast stockpiles or if okay. they have relationships with the companies that make the inlays or even NXP. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of the weirdness of the supply chain. You know, it's mm. it's like uh, this week ragu sauce is out at the you know grocery store, <laughs> but there's plenty of Chef Boyardee. <laughs> it's yeah. like, why? I don't know. It's tomatoes and paste. I don't know. You know exactly how hard is so, it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So it sounds like I mean, if if folks that were utilizing My Fair Desfire just simply knew in the back of their head at all times. Yeah, we work with uh, EV1, EV2, but, you know, we still got to figure out EV3. If you just knew that in the back of your head, it sounds like you're going to be a lot more flexible depending on where and when you need to source your materials from. Um, so I, that's I would, very interesting. I, I would say, and it's, you know, it's May. It's it's still mm -hmm. early May. Uh, schools in particular that will be ordering cards in any quantity, if you've been ordering EV1 or EV2 cards, especially from HID or Allegiant, uh, we will need to get test cards to you because if you place an order in the next few months, it's almost certainly going to be uh, able to be filled as an EV3 order. Right. So we need to we need to find out. You know, you need to find out whether this will work on your campus. Gotcha. Okay. And last question. Um, you know, looking at the marketplace that we're in right now how volatile it is. I mean, have we gotten any word or feedback from manufacturing partners if, if the light at the end of the tunnel is nearing? Um, are we, you know, are lead times getting better or is it still just, you know, navigating the madness? You know, I think it's the semiconductor industry and I don't yeah. know if it's, I mean, there's a lot going on there. And, uh, you know, with China shutting down whole cities, that, mm. that's not helping. Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of semiconductors are made in Taiwan. Uh, you know, the geopolitics may be affecting mm. all this. Who knows? You know, all the chips we all need may be sitting on five tankers or, or five container ships, you know, off the port of Long Beach <laughs> for the last six months. We, we just don't know. Right, um, right. And, you know, and sometimes we hear stories about, you know, great big orders of cards that just went missing for months. And, and mm -hmm. it, like what happened? Well, I don't know, but then they showed up 
yeah. you know, the information, all kinds of stuff is just really out of whack. And so right now I'm, we're not hearing anything new or different okay. about the supply chain and, and the ability to obtain these kinds of cards. So when manufacturers say, Hey, we can get EV3 out to you pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I would say get your orders in and get you get you some EV3. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, uh, great. Thanks for uh, chatting with me today, Dave. It's always very good and informative to sit down with you. Um, and we'll catch up with you again sometime soon. Great, Mark. Thanks a lot. All right. Take All care. Right. Mm, bye. <laughs> Thank you.